Today we're going to talk about a little bit about what is uh, color space, color management inside of Nuke. This is something that we're going to have to get through. Once you're through this, you can go and have fun in Nuke, but you have to understand color management inside of Nuke. Nuke is a 32-bit float package, and that means that all the imagery, all the stuff that you mix together and add green screen to, you know, green screen person on top of a CG background, all that has to be calculated in linear light space. And that's inside of Nuke. Not all images have linear light space. They have logarithmic curves to them. For instance, a JPEG has a brightening filter kind of embedded into it, and that's called sRGB. So we're going to talk about that and why that's come to be today, and all the confusion will hopefully end for you. So back in the day, we had CRT monitors or cathode ray tube uh, TVs. And, you know, the scientists that were you know, dealing with this type of stuff started to notice, well, wow, these monitors look a little dark. You know, I'm putting this image on here, and the image that I know of what it looks like in real life doesn't match with that. So due to the display output, they decided to change the image itself. So they did a little bit of a cheat. So you have a, a monitor that's not showing the image correctly. So in order to fix that, they added a gamma 2.2 curve. So we talked about gamma, and gamma is, is kind of not touching the highlights the absolute blacks or the absolute whites, but playing with the midtones. And that's what they do here. They sort of take the midtones up to 2.2. So the scientists back in the day said, I know, let's just adjust the image brighter. Let's take the image and kind of slap sort of a brightening filter on it. And again, you might hear the word brightening filter and some uh, you know, know-it-all compositor out there will go, oh, it's not being brightened, it's just the gamma. I'm like, that's what I meant. So basically the gamma is being changed, or you know, there's, there's adjustments in the actual curve itself. So that's what they did. And then they eventually came to realize that just by doing that, and again, uh, this represented in purple was the original dark image, right? And they want to get it to an appeasing look, which is where the blue line is at. And so what they did was they add a gamma of... of uh, 2.2, which is similar, kind of similar to what you're seeing here. And by brightening up everything in the midtones, whereas the uh, darks and the bright, uh, brights, the highlights, super highlights, absolute blacks and the absolute whites are kind of locked down, they brought the image up to brightness and they said, wow, that looks like what I'm looking at in the real world or the best I can be as far as like if I look at a sunset. So that that's good. So we're going to get around this issue by actually just brightening up the image itself on export. Okay, so there's an embedded gamma or brightening in all the JPEGs you've ever seen in your life. You don't even know it, but they actually are being brightened up so that when you look at them in a monitor, they look correct. So one day LCDs came along, and now you have a complicated issue here. You have LCDs, which are a different type of technology, and then you have CRTs, and you have a issue that the scientists would have to figure out and go, okay, We've got these two monitors. What if I'm an editor and I'm wanting to edit stuff and I want both to look the same, basically, as I go one to the other? So I said, how can we, you know, how can we make sure that these are fine? Because obviously, any images inside the LCD don't necessarily have this sort of uh, crutch that the CRTs were having. So they just basically made sure that the output of the LCD screen. Uh, it was actually maybe a little bit darker, or they just changed it up a little bit so that it would actually match. So what you have to keep in mind is these all of these images were always be given a brightening filter or embedded on their brightening filter upon export of editorials or, you know, packages or whatever. They were still brightened, um, you know, but in the end, you know, the display is sort of balancing all that out. So now you can see it fixed it. So... They fixed the problem, it was good to go, and then time went on. So that's where we're at right now. And now I want to talk about what's behind the scenes in Nuke, or should I say behind the screens. What we view when we look at a computer monitor, and that's what I'm going to technically say this is right here, is we're lo really looking at, first off, when the image comes into Nuke, it's read in, and be aware because it's, in this example, it's a JPEG, not all of them are like this. Different files have different sort of LUTs, uh, or curves attached to them. But JPEG specifically have an sRGB um, embedding in them. So it's already brightened up. So when it comes into Nuke, we can't have logarith logarithmic information, okay? Uh, two times two has to equal four. Uh, you know, three times three has to equal nine. If we start to mix linear uh, uh, information with l logarithmic, the math won't make sense and it'll just look like a muck. So we have to linearize everything so the math all makes sense. 
uh, as in within Nuke, we're going to be combining images and so forth. So everything has to be on the same playing field and in the same math. So when you bring an image into Nuke, doesn't matter what it is, it gets linearized. And we're going to talk about that. It basically makes it straight up and down. There is no logarithmic gamma curve that was there before. Once it's in Nuke, you can combine it, have all the other images, but <clears throat> it still looks kind of nasty, right? Well, we're going to view it and judge our color and judge our brightness and judge our final look by uh, looking at it in the viewer, and the viewer is actually adding a, its own brightening filter for you to kind of preview and look at it, and that's where this sRGB is coming in. So in your viewer, you have a little pull-down, so you can choose Rec. 709 or sRGB, and usually it's set to sRGB, so you're judging it for uh, for delivery to, say, just online stuff, like computer stuff, right, computer monitors that would display it. So this is what we're looking at, but actually in behind the scenes, it's actually looking like this. And then, of course, looking on display, this is what it looks like, and we go, oh, okay, so we're judging color by this. We're making changes to the images, and it's it's changing here, but really we're judging it by what it looks like with this added sort of brightening to it. So just be aware of that. When you're ready to render out of Nuke, you actually, when you have a write node, a write node will allow you to uh, write, if you want to write sRGB out, you know, embed an sRGB or a Rec. 709, and then you write it out, and then you're basically adding this brightening effect into the file upon the write node. Um, so again, everything in here has to be linearized, though. It cannot be logarithmic, but upon export or viewing, it actually has logarithmic SR sRGB to display. And again, I'm going to get into this a little bit more because it is a little bit confusing, but <clears throat> as we kind of talk about this. And what's also important as we kind of go through this, and we talk about the two most common that you can pull down. One is Rec. 709 and sRGB. Rec. 709 is relatively newer. It's got a little bit of a different curve than sRGB. And the reason for that is just for a more appeasing image upon the new HDTV monitors most of us have. Um, it kind of deals with uh, nicer blacks and so forth and so forth. So what's the kind of thing to kind of pull away from all this is if you're on a computer and you're going to be delivering it to, um, say, online material, you want to be obviously just looking at it through your computer monitor. But if you plan on sending it to Netflix or something like that, uh, submitting a, f a film to Netflix, you want to have a, an external monitor f uh, set up and plugged into, say, an HDMI to your uh, HDTV that's been uh, calibrated to have proper color. And that way you can actually judge what it's going to look like um, when someone's watching it at home, say, on their HDTV. It's ultimately where you're delivering it. Rec. 2020 is a new new thing that's coming out. Um, I'm hearing a lot about it, and uh, it has to do with the HDR monitors that are coming out in the future. That technology is still in the works, but many manufacturers of televisions and broadcasters are pushing it like crazy um, right now to really, really, really uh, make some money. And there's a battle between... You know, those that want to make money off of selling TVs and, and, and uh, you know, uh, Netflix subscriptions versus those of us that say, well, there's really not a lot of stuff going on in regards to the final image. There's going to be too much light pollution in your house anyway that's going to infect the blacks of the image. And really, really when you're talking about HDR monitoring, it's a little bit of details that you would see in a sunset or in the dark blacks, which usually get light pollution from, say, uh, a reflective theater or uh, anything in your house that's reflective that can affect the blacks themselves. So just be aware of that little fun fact. Every image that comes in is a little bit different. JPEGs, PNGs, QuickTimes, they usually come in with an sRGB curve that looks like this that's already been embedded on there. Okay, so there's a brightening effect. How do I know that? Well, if I double click on, say, oh, let's go to my QuickTime file here, right? Put my viewer to it. Here it is. You can see that when it comes in, the computer recognizes it as a QuickTime file and then it throws on a color space gamma 2.2. And what it's doing is, it's what this process is doing in the read node is basically linearizing the image. And what you're telling it is, okay, how do I unlinearize it, right? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor anywhere in the gray here, make sure I'm not clicking anything, and hit S for settings. And then we can see, if we go under our project settings under color, we can see the little operations that quote-unquote ungamma or unbrighten the image, or quote-unquote linearize the image. So you can see here we have this MPEG-4, you know, okay, so that's going to be, that's, it was given sRGB treatment. So the curve, the curve of this image 
was originally like this, right? Well, this bow is the mathematical operation to pull it back so that it eventually becomes linear, which is this is what everything has to be like inside of Nuke in order for us to play, play cards, so to speak, in Nuke. So by taking that, bending it back mathematically, you get this. Now, if you really want to see what this image looks like linearized, I can come over here and turn this to none. And now you can see what the image looks like um, in linear light space. Look how horrible that looks. Okay, but I'm previewing it with, say, sRGB. Now, if I was viewing this, say, on a uh, actual HD TV monitor, I can choose uh, Rec. 709. You can see there's a little bit of difference there, right? Um, and also Rec. 18, uh, 1886, which is uh, kind of coming out pretty soon as far as uh, judging for DVD release and so forth. But as of right now, it's still kind of in its infancy. But again, it's whatever you're looking at through, say, HDTV monitor or through a computer monitor, you have to kind of judge from there. Otherwise, you're judging the color wrong. So with that said, you can kind of take a look and see that, you know, it, again, if I turn this to none, I'm looking at the raw linear image inside, okay? So I'll go ahead and put that back to sRGB. So that's QuickTimes, JPEGs, PNGs, and now we get to EXRs. These are renders out of Maya. This is that alien render. This thing, if I double click it, you can see that it recognizes it as an EXR sequence and says, well, that's linear. So in other words, the math is basically, if I hit S for settings again, the math is taking this and then calculating it against this, which means there's no change at all. So this image just, nothing changes with this image, it's linear. So that becomes linear. Uh, DPXs are a little, little interesting. This is a JPEG from, I'm sorry, a DPX from um, some of the Black Magic stuff I was shooting for the checkerboard. And you can see if I double click that, it recognizes it as color space Cineon, okay, which is kind of logarithmic. If I hit S for settings again, we can go to Cineon and see here's the mathematical operation to invert it back. Okay, so this is what it is. This is the operation that linearizes it. And then eventually it becomes that when it's inside of Nuke. And again, if I want to see what it looks like and hit none, you can see this is the linearized version of it. Red Code Raw is really interesting. Uh, again, this was by the Red Company. <clears throat> and they have their own specific uh, interesting LUT for this. So if I hit S for settings, you can see red space. It's got a really, really interesting way of um, kind of embedding the image and so forth. So it, this is the process where it's taking it here and then bringing it down. And then, of course, it becomes linearized as well. So again, if I want to see what this looks like, that's what it looks like. Look how dark and nasty that is. Ugh, right? But it's linearized. It's not logarithmic. Okay. So eventually this stuff comes inside of Nuke. And everything's ready to play. I can start, you know, I could put the, you know, I can roto myself out. We'll get into roto a little bit later. I can actually, you know, composite, say, this alien on top of this checkerboard. Um, same thing here. Or put the alien in front of this black and white image. I don't know why I would do that, but I would. <laughs> I could if I wanted to. And in doing that, I everything's good. The math makes sense, and we're good to go. And then when it finally comes time, obviously we're looking at it through a viewer of an sRGB curve or write node. So if, regardless of whatever one of these is, they're now linearized, right, inside, of, um, inside the program. If I hit tab and type write node, right, and let's say I wanted to make this a JPEG, right? So here's the write node. And we didn't talk too much about this, but if you ever want to write an image out, you can choose your file format. In this case, um, I'm going to choose JPEG, right? This is, this is again, we got to ask the question, where are you going with this? I'm going to, uh, you know, display this or uh, have it online. So I'm making a JPEG. It automatically recognizes the JPEG, and it's going to embed an sRGB curve. Okay, so it's going to add that back in. Right, and then I can come over here and I'll call this, put this on my desktop. I'll call it uh, black white photo. And I'm gonna put dot JPEG. Now, if you're doing an image sequence, you can do three hashtags and a JPEG. You will have to write out the words JPEG, okay? Just to let you know that you have to write it out. So you have different choices here, MOV, QuickTime, DPX, okay, um, and so forth. I can put the quality to 100 or whatever. I'm going to hit Render, 
And I'm just going to render one frame, which is frame 0 to 0. Hit OK. There we go. So let's take a look at the image. It's looking good. It's looking correct in regards to being displayed for um, something that I would be showing online. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just demoing it for showing off a movie that I'm working on right now or something. So that's pretty much it. I know it's a little bit hard to understand, but just realize everything inside the no graph, okay, is linear. And then your viewer is giving you a preview view of what you're eventually going to embed this out to. So ultimately what you choose here is where what you're monitoring looking through, such such as an HDR monitor, you would choose this. And if you're going to, you know, get to where you're going to send this to, you're going to write it here. So, for instance, maybe you want to render it out of DPX or something and keep the quality up and keep going as you maybe have to hand it off to another compositor to put some special effects in or something like that. And that's pretty much it. Um, when I've worked on commercials, um, when I've worked on Capital One commercials and so forth, uh, they had specific LUTs that we were to sort of to judge, um, and we didn't have, they were kind of cross-compared cross against our, our uh, actual monitors, and we actually had a different pull-down. In fact, we had a uh, our custom one in here called Cap One LUT, and that was a specific LUT that was designed. And you can bring these in and so forth, and uh, for the for the sake of uh, what their editorial was using. So there's all types of things, and we haven't talked about input process yet. But there are many many ways of kind of bringing in your own custom LUTs if you need to, and so forth. But just understand the workflow here. It's so important. Because if you export something off in a right node that's the wrong quality or, or the you know the wrong color space, it's going to look really really weird. For instance, if I take this color space here and I choose say Cineon or something, right, and I hit render, and let's go ahead and pop that image. It's looking extremely bright now. See how how so that's wrong? Okay, it's not set up for proper display with your monitor and so forth. So something to be aware of.